All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to another Shoe Snob Blog unboxing video series, One Take Wonders. Here we are with something different, something new, <clears throat> something that has been a long time in the making. Um, as you can see, there are two boxes here. And that is because we have a trial fit shoe and actual product. So let's jump straight into it. The project at hand, as you've probably seen from the written description, is with Casoleria Cardellino, who is a bespoke shoemaking outfit out of Modena, Italy, which is just above Bologna, which is in the, I believe Italians still consider that central Italy, even though you'd split Italy in half and it'd be on the north side. Um, and so, you know, a lot of bespoke makers had to really reinvent themselves in the pandemic as many people didn't travel for two to three years. And the problem with people not moving around is bespoke shoemaking is reliant upon either the maker traveling to the client or the client traveling to the maker because Many bespoke shoemakers, well, yeah, many, I mean, many live in small, rem not necessarily remote, but small towns. Like, you know, when you think of Italy, what are the cities that get the most tourism? Florence, Rome, Milan, Naples, you know, the big ones. But how often do you go to Modena, Modena and stumble across the bespoke shoemaker and the quaint little downtown village of that city. Probably not often. So, bespoke makers of that nature rely on wealthy, semi-wealthy individuals to come see them who travel from afar and or who will pay them to come see them, uh, which is also very realistic for uber wealthy individuals who value their time and don't mind spending it to send the maker to them. But as m a lot of travel halted for a long time, uh, many bespoke makers had to quickly reinvent the way they do things. So uh, Ricardo Carlino came up with an idea of remote bespoke. Now, he's not the only one. Uh, there was also a Japanese shoemaker who did the same, but uh, for the sake of telling you about this, I worked with Ricardo to create a pair of bespoke boots using his remote bespoke service because clearly I did not go to Italy to try on, uh, to get fitted and do the bespoke process. Um, and he did not come to me. So we did it online, virtually, however you want to call it. Um, I've made some videos about the measuring part of this, this you know, initial process that you can see where Carlino, I'll just call him Carlino for short because it's Ricardo Carlino, but the brand is Carlino. Carlino sends a document describing, I say describing, it's very commonsensical if you have that, how to measure your feet for the purposes of, of his use. And, uh, and so we went through that process and you know we chatted a lot about what I was looking for and what kind of last shapes I like and this and this and that and created the end product that I want to share with all of you and kind of talk you through how that process goes. So again, when you're looking for bespoke and you are not able to travel and the maker's not coming to do any trunk shows but you really want to try them out you know, the first thing a maker is always going to need are your measurements. Now, measuring is not difficult per se. Yeah, it's, you know, there are margins of error. And, but a lot of it will also be based on you and what you like in terms of fit. So, you know, uh, I like snug fits. I don't like loose fit, but again, the communication was necessary because I like a snug fit, but I also wanted to make something that I could wear with heavier socks. 
So these types of things need to come into play when you're doing the measurements and whatnot. And of course, the shoemaker will always put a little bit of an allowance on your measurements because, and based on your communications as well, and based on how tight you are measuring. So the measuring videos you can watch and see, right? So once you got your measurements, you send them to the shoemaker. Shoemaker then creates your last. You talk about the kind of shape you want, chisel, round, almond, etc., big old bulbous toe, whatever you fancy. And then they make you what's called a trial fit. So let's take a look at the trial fit. So the trial fit in shoe is always not usually not attractive, right? This is just to get the basis of fit. So they take, you know, undesirable leather, they last it as they would um, by hand quickly, just, you know, this is like a, a rush process. And it's really not a rush process, but it's not done to the full extent of a bespoke shoe would be. So they take the last they've made, they wrap the leather around, and then different makers will put on different type soles. Some will actually put an undesirable leather sole. Roberto, uh, excuse me, not Roberto, Ricardo, uh, put on a cork sole. Um, this is a cork sole with what looks like as another kind of, this is not a cork, but it's like a foam heel. And so he sends this to you so you can make adjustments if necessary. If they knock it out of the park and get that last perfect first go, that's great. That's a shorter process and hopefully a better end result. But sometimes you use this to make markings. Now, uh, you can say, okay, over the vamp, there's a little bit of space. Please take some out. Uh, my heel's a little loose. Oh, this is touching me here. And with the trial fit in shoe, they make the adjustments for the final product. So uh, I tried these on and, and really it was pretty straightforward to what I wanted. I believe if I recall, I said there might have been some space in the vamp. I have very shallow toes um, and, and I don't like too much space in there. But at the same time, my feet swelled. So, you know, I got crazy feet. So, so they send that. Now, that's all part of the bespoke process. You pay for that within the price, right? He doesn't charge you extra. And this is a way to, you know, alleviate any kind of unsatisfactory fitting in the end product. So I got the uh, trial fitting shoes. Ricardo was kind enough to send some bags with those, even though it's not necessary, because this is really, you know, this is garbage at, at, at the end of the day. There's, you can't wear this shoe. It'll eventually, you know, separate. This is just quickly cemented on. I have known people that turn those into actual shoes, but I don't really recommend it. So, the end product of the remote bespoke. Now, again, because this was bespoke and somebody takes a long time to make these, I was very upfront with Ricardo and said, look, I don't wear people's, I don't wear dress, I don't wear shoes that people send me because I have my own brand and every day I need to represent my brand. Now, that doesn't mean I won't wear something on the weekend, but I tend not to wear dress shoes on the weekend. So I didn't want Ricardo to go through all this trouble just for a video because a bespoke pair of shoes, boots, whatever, it's a timely and expensive process. It's not like a manufacturing shoe, a manufactured shoe. It's, it, it's a significant investment just to make it, not only in time, but in money. So I said, you know, I would wear some boots uh, on my weekends because I, I dress casual, more casual on the weekends, more relaxed. Um, and, and so we went for a boot model. Now I'm always trying to do something I wouldn't make myself as well because it just doesn't make sense to have anything too close to what I produce. So we went with something a little different. Let's take a look. So packaging, nice. Uh, very beautiful, straightforward, black paper, well presented. Got your shoes in here. These are boots. He packs with a little bit more packing just to make sure there's not movement because again, I've told you in shipment with shoe trees, unfortunately, 
the shoe trees can do damage and you'll, you'll, you'll see a scuff on your shoe and you'll think, oh, what is the shoemaker sending me stuff like this with a scuff, but it can happen in shipment. And when shoemakers tell you that probably happened in shipment, you might think they're lying, but it's true. I've seen it, <laughs> I've, I've witnessed it. Uh, I've had broken shoe trees arrive in shipment because the knob was just too high. And unfortunately the shoes weren't tight and the knob broke off. So, you know, they do happen. All right, let's take a look. All right, so what I got was a, what I think is a mid boot because a, a proper boot would probably be about an inch taller, not a proper boot, but a normal high boot would be about an inch taller. So this is almost like between a chukka and, a, and your typical tall boot. Uh, grain derby boot with Norwegian stitch and a storm welt. So I don't produce Norwegian stitches and I rarely put storm welts on my shoes and with a lug sole. So I thought this is something casual and not something that I would do. So let's try this, right? Now I love round toes. I'm not, uh, I love the idea of chisel toes, but I just don't like the way they look on my foot, really. Uh, you know, to a degree I can appreciate it, but if I have to choose, I will always go with the round toe. So, here you can see the boots on my feet. A great fit, a little bit of space in the shaft because I do have skinny ankles, but overall a nice snug fit with a thick sock. Let's take a look at everything. Let's start with fit. As expected, we asked for a little bit of space for a thicker sock. So when I tried these on, I tried it with a thinner sock and as was expected, there was a little bit of space. But when I put on the heavy sock, because that's how I intend to wear these, I don't intend to wear these in summer. I intend to wear these in the cooler months. You know, that's what the big, heavy, beefy sole with the grain leather is for, is the cooler months, in my opinion. And they fit just right with a thicker sock. Now, full disclosure, my feet are challenging. It's very rare. I've had bespoke over the years. And a lot of times, the way it comes out, because I have these like kind of skinny, longish, very shallow feet. So I get this like really, I have like no, I have no uh, height in my toes. My toes are very thin. And I get this kind of like, sunken vamp uh, and a lot of times it looks too elongated but I want to try to avoid that so I'm like hey don't make it too long because I don't like it when something's too long and then it looks even more exaggerated but at the end it almost looks wider than my foot which is strange I'm like oh man this looks wide but I tried it on and it was and it was okay and I remember I had the same thing with a pair of uh, Graziat Taipei loafers where it looked wide but I tried it on and it fit great I was like huh strange because my feet aren't wide but fit was the fit was great for what we were going for now I have to stress and emphasize because if you guys are watching this video and say oh I really want to try that you know this may sound crazy to you but the higher expectations we have of perfection, I feel like the more chances we have of feeling left down because I really, I think it's, I, I don't think perfection really so much exists in fit when you are like on a quest for it. I think you'll always feel let down. I feel like perfection exists when you're easy going and you're just like yeah this fits good it's not you know okay maybe it could have been like a millimeter here and there and there and there but if you constantly dwell on that you're never going to be satisfied in bespoke and you know I've, i know all, i know many bespoke shoemakers and i've just heard stories of guys who want remakes like seven times over and it's just because these people aren't realistic they're searching for something that doesn't exist because it's in their mind it's not grounded in reality and in reality those people cannot be satisfied so i must state this because 
I feel like some people look at me as a shoe snob and say, oh, there's this perfection and this and that and that and that. No, 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 no. You know, as I get older and over the years I see more and more shoes, I start to realize that the beauty is in the lack of perfection and the perfection that we think is really just in our heads and, and, and going constantly nitpicking at things that don't matter just in reality ends up causing issues not only for you but for the shoemaker it's just not a great experience um you know for me these fit exactly how we wanted to they have a little bit of generosity for a thicker sock which is what i needed now i love a slimmer looking profile so it would have been nice if this was cut a little slimmer then would i have had the space for the thicker sock that i wanted so you kind of have to take that in mind you have to be careful what I want versus what I like. Uh, so I want a slim looking shoe, but I wanted something that fits a, a thick sock, which means, you know, I need more space in there. But when I put them on, I actually really like them. Uh, and you can see there as well. And they come out really nice. And this is a beautiful, solid boot. Now it's got quite a heel on it. And, you know, I'm not one of those short guys who wants to be taller per se you know i don't mind a standard heel but it looks also bigger because it's got that lug sole to it which adds an extra three quarters of an inch i think maybe half an inch even so all right let's take a look now ricardo shoes ricardo carlino come with well i don't know about the shoe shoes but the boots come with proper boot trees and these trees are split into three. So, and these are nice because they have the uh, the magnetic pieces there to make them kind of keep in place. So nice, proper, bespoke tree. Very beautiful. I like looking at the trees because you you really see the shape. And what's crazy is I don't look at my foot and see a high instep, although it fits the instep fine, but I do have this like a uh, soccer player bump on my instep that can cause me problems, especially in derby boots. So cutting a little bit high, giving me a little bit extra space so I don't feel that pressure uh, was nice. You can really see the shape of a last here, of a foot with arch, the arch support, uh, you know, there's a nice cut. It's not flat here, which is what, you know, most cheap shoes just have flat soles. Um, so yeah, very elegant trees. Wonderful lining. You won't be able to see the brand, but it says there, Carlino, very soft. This is a very, actually, very soft boot. Uh, this grain is really lovely. It's, uh, but it's a solid boot, you know? This is a real a real tanker of a boot, which is what I wanted. I wanted a casual tanker. It's got the uh, full arch support. Again, I want to share with you, full leather arch supports for those who are not used to it might feel uncomfortable. I remember when I first tried one on and man, it tired it, it tired it it tired out my arch. I, don't, I can't even pronounce that word. It made my arch tired, but after it broke in, it felt amazing. So if you're not used to it, it will feel like something that doesn't feel comfortable, but that's because you're just not used to it. But it's the exact support your body and arch need to remain comfortable once that softens up to keep you supported all day long that's important you know let's say i want to take these on the hike and i'm walking miles and miles i need that that arch support so that my feet and my arch don't tire out anyway beautiful solid boot everything is perfect you see it did get a bit uh, scuffed up in shipment from i know the trees trees are these, these are heavy trees like a two pound tree just one side and uh, you know, I didn't polish it out because I haven't tried to touch them to always remain uh, true in the unboxing. Uh, and yeah, beautiful pair of boots. You know, again, more casual side of things, but that's what I wanted. I did not want a dress shoe. 
I wanted something rugged. And I'm happy with the remote bespoke process. I think it worked out exactly as I planned. Um, I got the boot with a little bit of extra space to fit with a thick sock. Um, and that's what I wanted and it fits. And I will actually look forward to wearing these maybe even this weekend because it is freezing here in New York and I'm wearing very thick socks these days. So, uh, yeah, let me just think as I feel like I'm forgetting something, but, uh, I know many of you scream about price. Sadly, I don't know the price. <laughs> I forgot what Ricardo starts at. I did write about it years ago on my post, but I imagine that things have changed because the world has changed. But one thing I can tell you is Italian bespoke shoemakers have probably the most reasonable prices out of the majority of bespoke shoemakers in the world. Um, I think before he was starting crazy low, I don't even want to quote it, but I would just expect in the realm of 1,500 to 3,000 euros. I know it's a big jump, but it's gonna be somewhere around there. Um, I think 2,000 euros is a, is a good approximation, especially if you're going for a boot of this nature where you have more leather, you have more construction, you got the Norwegian welt, you got the... I love how he actually, sorry, this is something I haven't mentioned. He fudge wheeled the storm well, which <coughs> I don't think uh, I've seen before, which is really cool. All the way around the shoe and did a flawless job, I might say, because there's no hiding an error on this thing. And yeah, so Ricardo's a young guy, very nice guy. The process, easy, simple. Again, there might be a learning curve. There always is. I'm not going to claim to be an expert foot measure. I did my best with the instructions provided, and I think the end result came out satisfactory, and I'm pleased with that. And when I say satisfactory, it's not like in the bare minimum. It's like, that's good. That's what I wanted. It's how it came. Again, my level of expectations these days, because I've seen it all, they're not actually that high. I no longer think, oh, I'm getting the holy grail of holy grails. I don't think like that anymore. You know, when you're young and excited and I got my first G&G shoe, I saw oh, it's the holy grail of shoes. But now, now I'm not, not necessarily overthinking and overanalyzing them. I'm just happy for a nice shoe with some good fit that feels comfortable, looks good, quality is good. Shoemaker's nice, brand is nice. That's more what I look for now. I like to support nice people that make a good product. You know, I don't care if it's this or that or that or this. Just a good shoe, an honest price, and a good person behind the brand. And Carlino Bespoke are nice people that make good shoes, that care about what they're doing. And it's a chance to get bespoke without having to travel. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Definitely always reach out if you have questions. I'm happy to help. Uh, and yeah, don't be afraid to reach out to Ricardo if you have any questions as well. And if you are looking for a not too expensive bespoke experience, I definitely suggest giving him a look as I know he offers good prices. So thank you as always for tuning in. Do stay tuned as always for more. There's always lots to come. Everybody wishing everybody a great day. Take care. Bye.